I want to talk for a little while about how to put this text in context a little bit because we love that 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 that, that great is thy faithfulness, yeah. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. But if you know the background of the text a little bit, mm -hmm. you know you gotta you gotta you gotta go through some stuff mm -hmm. to get to the great if thou faithfulness, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, so so I just want to talk about uh, issues and problems and the faithfulness of God. Right. Yeah. Right. Issues. issues and problems and the faithfulness of God. You know, every time you stand before a congregation. There's a good chance somebody in the house, Sister Mona, is going to feel good. I know that somebody is feeling good up in here today. Somebody is excited. How often do you celebrate 152 years? Somebody is fired up about something. Somebody is feeling good. Kick back, lay to the side. Everything seems to be going your way. Somebody is still smiling over some blessing that happened earlier this week. All right now. Somebody here this this evening has a little pep in your step, a bop in your hop, a glide in your stride, and a song on your tongue. Somebody feeling good up in here, and you feel good all over. I understand it. I know it. You feel good because everything is going right in your life. Well, yeah. Husband is faithful and wife is grateful. Children mind and everything is going fine. Right. Money is not funny and change is not strange. Yeah. And when the bills are due, this time you have the money on you. Yeah. All right now. Yeah. No, I have a preference. This time. Yeah. Getting good grades. Everything coming up space. Trump tight. Yeah. And out of sight. Yeah. Everything going right in your life. Doctors' reports are good. Children dating the right folk for a change. Well, yeah. When there is peace at home uh -huh. yeah. and at work, yeah. Yeah. it's real easy to praise God. Yeah. So I don't have to tell you that God is worthy of praise. Yeah. I don't have to tell you that God will make a way. You are a living testimony that God will make a way. Therefore, it is easy for you to praise God. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for you to tell somebody that God is good. Because you declared a long time ago that when God got you out of that mess you were in, well, you decided that you weren't going to play with God anymore. You decided that you were tired of playing church. So you start praising God and you didn't care who knew it or what they said about you. Nobody right now can stop you from praising God. And if your neighbor doesn't want to praise God, you just say, excuse me, while I get my praise on. Because you don't know, like I know, what God has already done for me. So it's real easy to get our praises on. When we're feeling good and we know that God has been good to us. Wonder is good. Yeah.
praising God. It's a little hard when you're heartbroken. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Praising God. Yeah. A little bit harder when you're worrying about the rent or the mortgage. Yeah. 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 Praising God. Uh, a little bit harder when you're trying to stretch Monday night dinner to Thursday and sometimes Friday. Praising God's a little bit harder. Boy. Yeah. Marriage is shaky and yeah. the yeah. children are flaky. Yeah. Yeah. When you came on Friday and broke by Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Praising God's a little bit harder. Yeah. When you realize your home can be taken well, you're about to lose a job. Yeah. Praising God, no matter how long you've been walking with the Lord, can sometimes get pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, for the most part, we made it. Yeah. We made it because we realize Thank you, Lord. that the same God who brought us through before yes, yeah. is the same God who opened up a highway of freedom before. The same God who picked us up and turned us around. The same God who made sure our bills somehow got paid back. The same God who gave us another job with more money and better benefits, the same God same who was there for us in the past will be there for us right now. I hear God telling somebody today, be still and know that I am God. I came to tell somebody that God is still on the throne. God is working it out. So we think. Sometimes we come stumbling and bumbling, but we get there. Sometimes we get there a little bit quicker, sometimes we get there a little bit slower than us. Yes, yes. But we get there, yes, we get there. But I want to talk about a situation where that some of us find ourselves in, mm -hmm. and if we aren't careful, well, it can really destroy us because when you find yourself in this situation, uh -huh. praising God is almost not an option. Mm -hmm. It's when calamity yes. and your whole world, your very existence oh. is shattered. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I need to be clear. I'm not just talking about losing one thing uh -huh. or going through one thing. I, I'm talking about the multiplicity of events uh -huh. that come to you in Job-like way. Yeah. 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 The calamities are back to back to back. Before you can catch your breath, uh -huh. here comes something else. Yeah. 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 Listen, let me see if I can break it down this way. It's more than losing your home. It's losing your home with no place to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's losing health insurance and then getting sick. Yeah. It's being on the streets and then, yeah, turning to drugs to dull the pain. And of course, since you're drug doing drugs, you can't pass a drug test now. Yeah. And you need that job to at least try to get you back into the house. Yeah. But you get called with a catch 22 and it's all messed up. Yeah. Oh, when calamity happens, yeah. joy is gone. Yeah. Happiness is out the window. Well, then peace, your up, peace is over. All hope seems lost. All right. Moreover, when this happens, you really don't want to hear cliches no, no, and catchphrases. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, God is good yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Where well, God is good. Yeah. Just keep on praying, sister. Keep on. You'll be all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You took that to the Lord. Yeah. Mm. You know what you need to do. Just turn it to the Word, girl. Just turn Wow, pietistic. Mm. Are you taking that to the Lord? Mm. Mm. All right now. You really don't want to hear that. No. Mm. You just want the pain to stop. Mm -hmm. The misery to stop. You just want the worry to be over. You want it all to be over. Just stop. Mm. Can the world just stop for a moment? Mm. Mm. Talking about calamity. I'm talking about compounded stuff. Uh -huh. Can I just catch my breath? Yeah, yeah. You're scared to even get up and go anywhere because when you get there, something don't show up and just be there waiting on you. Like, here's another issue. Uh -huh. That's what we have in our text. 
Tradition has it that Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations after he witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylon. And as he surveyed the land and saw all the rubble, dust, and smoke as far as his eyes could see, he becomes very despondent and on the verge of despair. Yeah, yeah. First, he saw the wholesale massacre of all the leaders, prophets, and people. I don't think we stop long enough when we read biblical texts to begin to understand how do humans, or how, yeah, how do humans absorb all of the wickedness and the evil and the mass murders that we read in our texts? Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Things got bad, so bad during this time, that there were even reports, it's right there about how women begin to eat their own children yeah. just to survive. Yeah. And to make matters worse, the rest of the people were driven into exile where they had to suffer even more pain, more grief, and more sorrow. Yes. And to make matters worse, there was not anything Jeremiah or his fellow Israelites could do about it. And when calamity visits, you feel helpless because all that you know, all that you learn, all that you have, all you can get doesn't seem to me. And again, to make matters worse, it seems that every time you do try to get out of your situation, when you got compounded calamities, uh -huh. You end up doing something that cause your situation to be a little bit worse. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. Mm -hmm. now if this was just a bump in the road, mind you, if this was just a bad decision uh -huh. in a desperate time, yes, sir. we can bounce back. Amen. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. However, I'm talking about when everything breaks down. Everything. Yeah. I'm thinking Katrina. Mm -hmm. yeah. When everything breaks down, yeah. I'm thinking about war. Well, yeah. when everything breaks down, I'm talking about relationships that you have been a part of for years yes, sir. that you thought were the bedrock of your very existence. Yeah, yeah. Shadows. Mm -hmm. When someone dies. Yeah. When someone leaves. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Ferguson. I'm talking about calamity. Yes, sir. What do you do? Yes, sir. How do you make it? How do we win? Well, I don't have all the answers, but I do believe the text is a good starting point. All right. yes, yes, sir. Listen, as Jeremiah lamented about his situation, he said, I remember the affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. And what this tells me is that first thing you must do when you find yourself in a calamity situation is to open your mouth and recognize where you are. Yes, sir. You are in a messed up condition. Yeah. No reason to sugarcoat it. Yeah. No reason to try to save face. Well, and make it look good. No reason yeah. to deny that you are in pain. No reason to try to hide the obvious. You are in a messed up condition because your whole world is turned upside down. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this because in the church, church people, well, we got we got that perfect church language. All right, now. Come on. One of the cardinal virtues of church <laughs> is that everything is always all right. Never show people that you're worried because that doesn't look good when you say you have faith. So all we can, how you doing? You know, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, I know who my Savior is. I'm doing all right. God just blessing me, increasing my territory. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what other people are going through, but me and the Lord, we just fine. We everything is great. Oh, uh, but don't follow them home. She messed up marriages, messed up finances, messed up children, messed up spouses. So in order for you not to lose your mind, in order for you not to be locked up in a hospital talking to a wall. You better cry out. Not only to others, but to the Lord. Listen, the whole book of Lamentations is one big lament to God. The entire book. There was no shame. 
No pretense, no, none of this, I got this, I handle this by myself. That was, no, let me work this out by myself. When trouble hits you, your cool points fly out the window. Yeah, 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 yeah. When trouble shows up at your door, you're not trying to be cute, yeah. cool, calm, and collected. You're trying to get some relief. And the only way to do that is to first cry out yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. God is bigger, bigger yeah. enough to handle your little yes, mess. Yeah. 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 Give me strength to make it. Yes. Lord, if you don't come down here, I might lose my mind. Yeah. Lord, if you yeah. gotta do something, yeah. Lord. Cry out yeah. to the Lord. Somebody ask, I know you're asking, why should I cry out? I know. Why should I lament? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're such an inquisitive congregation. Yeah. <laughs> because Jeremiah has to answer. Right. After his lament, he remembered his affliction and wonder, and he said, yep. This I call to my mind, and therefore, I have hope. I like that. Because as long as you can keep crying out, you always have some hope. Because there is always someone on the other end that's always listening. And the lament helped Jeremiah remember that. For you see, when we lament and lament hard, something comes over us. It's a sweet spirit of peace and relief. Listen, if you can just get stuff off your chest to humans, Right. And you feel good about it. How come you can't do that with the Lord? Right. Yeah. 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 Because the reason why we can't see that before the lament is because our situation is blocking our feet. Yeah. Yeah. But when we lament, cry out, we get above the situation mm -hmm. and go directly to God. Yes. When God senses that we are passionate about our laments, when God sees that we wanted to engage with God all night long and we have to, when he sees we are not leaving until there is a blessing. God sees that we are struggling for answers. Well, God provides the peace and understanding that we need to make it another day. Yeah. When we have that, we then can see our way through. Amen. When we have that, we can act a certain way. Yeah. We don't have to go back to what we used to do when we needed something. Uh -huh. We don't have to get caught up in playing games with anybody. Yeah. Don't have to fake or flodge or duck and die uh, trying to make ends meet because after we lament, we understand and realize that because of the Lord's great love, we uh -huh. are not concerned. Uh, yeah. In other yeah. words, yeah. in spite of all, we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. I just came to remind somebody things may not be right in our lives, yeah. but we still here. Yeah. 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 It may be dark right now for some of us, but we still here. Yeah. Yeah. We may be struggling right now, but we still here. Yeah. Yeah. We are not consumed. We are not forsaken. We are not alone. We are not destroyed. We are still here. The yeah. songwriter says, I'm still here. Yeah. Still here, we've been yeah. kept yeah. by God. So yeah. I mean, then somebody might ask, such an inquisitive bunch of people. Mm. Yeah. How in the world would all this happen to us? How in the world are we still here? Uh, How in the world are we to listen? Have you ever been through something and got on the other side and just wondered how in the world did I come through that? Right. That just I thought I was done coming yeah. through that trial and yeah. tribulation. How in the world? The, how in the world are we still standing? How in the world are we still here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because the text gives an answer. Yeah. It's because God's compassion is yeah. yeah. not. And I just came to remind somebody yeah. who is going through it all right now uh -huh. that God is a compassionate God. Yeah. Yeah. And God's compassion has never failed. Yeah. The reason why you're still here is because God has comforted you. Yeah. And God has provided yeah. for you. God has empowered you. God has strengthened you. And God is a compassionate God. Even when you didn't think God was right there, God was taking care of you. The devil wanted to take you out. The devil wanted you to turn back. The devil wanted you to take some shortcuts and hook up. The devil wanted to tempt you with other messiahs promising to save you from your situation. The devil wanted you to give up on God. But the reason why you're still here is that God's compassions fail not. Yes. Yes. Then I hear somebody over here mm. asking why 
don't they ever fail? Well, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why can God keep on giving me what I need to bear the storm? Yeah. 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 Well, it's because God never runs out of compassion. Yeah. 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 Because they're new every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, God doesn't run out of compassion. Because God's compassion is new every yeah. morning. Yeah. That's the reason why you can get out of bed. That's the reason why you can still go to work. That's the reason why you can still go to school. That's the reason why you can still do the things you need to do. Because God's compassion is new every morning. The good news is that before we got up, before we thought about washing our face and brushing our teeth, before we thought about breakfast or that first cup of coffee, while we were sleeping, God had already prepared a brand new set of compassion for us to help us get through the day. God had already prepared a prayer warrior to pray the right prayer. God had already prepared the song to come on the radio just at the right time that we needed to hear. God had already removed some of the crazy folk out of your life in order for you to reflect and pray in peace. God had already strengthened us. All right. Take whatever will be thrown our way from good, well-meaning folk. Well, who sometimes really and truthfully get on our nerves. I came to remind somebody in here Come on, mm. that God has got some new compassion for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you do every morning. Yeah. Every morning, no leftover compassion. Yeah. Uh -huh. No warm over compassion. Yeah. Uh -huh. None of that, you know, leftover, warm over, none of that microwavable compassion. Uh -huh. They knew every morning. Yeah. Yeah. You say, what's that in the kitchen? That's what that smell. Oh, that's God's compassion. Yeah. Some fresh compassion. But, but, but then the question is, how do we respond? How do we thank the Lord for all of this? We just got to declare, great is God for you. How do you get to 152 years? Great is God for you. Even when my faith gets weak, uh, even when my faith is absent, my, even when I get weak and turn back, even my, when I fail the test time and time again, I'm so glad that the Lord remained faithful. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. And over Canaan, I know it hadn't always been a bed of roses in that 152 years. I know it got rocky sometimes for the leaders and for the people and for the folk who started this church. Yeah. But, but, but they declared a long time ago with, with, with lamentations declared a long time ago. Yes, great, great is that faithfulness. Yeah. Through all the storm and the fire, great, great. is that faithfulness. Yeah. Through all the ups and downs, great, great. is that faithfulness. Yes, Through the high points and low points, yes, great yeah. is that faithfulness. Yeah. Jeremiah says something that's simple, but yet powerful. Well, Jeremiah says, after all of this, oh, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I wait on. I don't know about you, but the Lord is my portion. I just thought about to tell somebody that after you've admitted about your situation, after you have cried out, after you sit around and see the destruction all around you, yes, sir. after you realize that God is compassionate uh -huh. and faithful, then you got to say to yourself, despite it all, despite the Lord all. is my portion. Yeah. Therefore, I wait on him. Uh -huh. I like that because no matter how many times I say it, uh -huh. no matter how many times Pastor Hawkins says it, no matter how many times mommy and daddy say it, yeah. no matter how many times you've heard it from somebody else, well, there comes a time in our lives uh -huh. where we have to say it for ourselves. Yes, sir. The Lord uh -huh. is my portion. Yeah. I wait on him. Wait on I used to have some other portions, but now the Lord is my portion. Yeah. I wait on him. Yeah. In other words, there comes a time when the Lord becomes real in your life. Yeah. There comes a time when we all stop playing church. Yeah. There comes a time when we really start to pray. Uh -huh. There comes a time when all the games are cut short. Yeah. There comes a time when God is real in our lives. Yeah. And that's when we need to say, the Lord is oh, my portion. Yeah. I wait on Him. Yeah. No longer am I waiting on anybody else. No longer am I waiting on a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. No longer am I waiting on a hookup or a 
esteem. I'm no longer waiting on somebody to come and bail me out from my own destruction. I finally realized that the Lord is my portion and I wait on him to deliver. The Lord has my portion. I wait on him to save. I wait on God to set free and I allow the God to use whoever God wants to use yes, in order to deliver me and get me up out of my situation. Yes, and when you wait, you will see that God is faithful. Yes, but they that wait upon the Lord yes, shall renew their strength. Yes, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Oh, if you can just wait on the Lord, yes, if you can just proclaim with me, great, great. is thy faithfulness. Yes, morning by morning. Yes.